Hello, Brian Pierce with the Pierce Brothers. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Smith & Wesson J-Frames. Um, we're going to begin the story, I guess, uh, with uh, what was known as the Chief Special, which was a little five-shot J-Frame. Um, it was first offered in 1950, and it was actually not known as the Model 36 at the time, just simply as the Chief Special. Smith & Wesson enlarged, both lengthened and enlarged their frame, the I-frame, to create this gun, and it was designed specifically for the 38 Special cartridge. And um, it, it was interesting in the design because with the five-shot cylinder, it put the bolt notches right between the chambers, and that gave a full uh, gave a lot of strength around those chambers. I've said for years and years that they could uh, chamber that gun in 357. They take a plus P load very very well. Everybody thought, oh no, Brian, you're crazy. Well, then Smith and Wesson eventually chambered it in 357, and they've had zero issues with those guns. They generally are listed as having a two-inch barrel. Um, they're actually a little less than that. I think, I don't remember the exact measurement, but it's about 1.85 inches with what most of those come out at. Um, they they developed it, of course, in 1950. Um, soon thereafter, they came out with the model um, 37, which was, this was, of course, an all steel version. The model 36 was all steel version. They eventually came out with an alloy version, and that was the model 37 air weight, and then eventually model 38, which this is really an interesting variant because only weighs a little over 14 ounces. Um, it, it's, of course, uh, built with a shrouded hammer. So it's got a funny appearance with a shroud here, but it allows you to cock that gun, and yet it's still snag free. So in a, in a, as a pocket gun or getting out of a holster of clothing, it just isn't prone to snagging like the hammer guns do. Um, they, there's, there's even yet another variant wherein, uh, wherein the hammer's completely enclosed. Um, and that's, uh, very popular. Strictly double action. No single action or double action. It's strictly double action for defense purposes. Um, um, of course, eventually Smith and Wesson, um, came out with them in stainless as the Model 60, um, which was, uh, the stainless steel version of the Model 36 Chief Special. Today, they sell these by the boatload. Um, and here's three variants. Um, of course, uh, the Model 6, um, Model 637, alloy frame, plus P rated, um, exposed hammer, red, you know, readily exposed hammer spur. A lot of people still like that. Um, you kind of got to be careful that you're carrying them in the correct style holster something that uh um will protect that hammer something like this uh this old bianchi pancake is a very good uh very good style uh for carrying that um some people even prefer to carry them uh um there, here's a, here's an example that has a little clip so carrying it with no holster uh, the clip keeps it from going down your pants on the inside. Uh, of course, it's out of the way when you draw it and get ready to fire. This is the model 442, by the way. Alloy frame, no no exposed hammer. The advantage of no exposed hammer is that, of course, no thing to snag on, but dirt and lint does not get down inside the action. Uh, one of the drawbacks with the with like the model 38s or 638s. Um, um, so it's I, I actually very much favor the 638 um, in this configuration here, either blue or stainless. Uh, very great little guns. Um, again, they've offered these in 357, but the 38 at 14 or 14 and a half ounces, roughly, kind of snappy with plus P loads. Um, we're going to talk about loads mi briefly a minute. Here's the one problem you have: that short of a barrel. With a fairly low pressure cartridge, a jack of the bullet, it's hard to get the velocities you need to get reliable expansion. That's one of the reasons that, like Spear, did a special line of uh, Gold Dot SB, standing for short barrel uh, bullets. And there are several other companies that offer those same bullets in factory ammunition. It's designed to expand at super low velocities, and those are really good options, especially in the 125 to 135 grain weight in a plus B load. Um, um, another really good option is, uh, 
is to go with a full wad cutter. Um, people think I'm nuts about that, but a wad cutter in plus P, you can get about 850 feet per second. That big flat point hits hard, penetrates deep and straight, creates a permanent wound channel, very effective. Being a cast lead bullet, um, it's a little easier to get higher velocities with that weight of a bullet. Um, a cast bullet will go down the barrel with less resistance than a jack and a bullet. So that's what that's about. But those are very effective. Buffalo Bore offers one. I prefer my hand loads in that, by the way, but but um, but that's also a very good option. Um, but that's this is one of the absolute most popular guns in the world for, for, for concealed carry. Simplicity, uh, minimal training, somebody can can um, can master one. Uh, they're they're safe. Um, you know, of course, respected like any gun in that regards. Um, um, but they're they're simple to use, very reliable, ultra reliable. Um, they're just a great backup gun or a great uh, light duty concealed gun. Um, um, so there, that's that's one to think about. The J frame is interesting though because um, it's been competed with with other companies. You know, Colt competed with their D frame. Of course, they started out as the Detective Special. It's a six shot, but it's also quite a little bit larger as you can see than the J frame. The J frame being a five shot is just more compact, easier to carry. This one being a, a Cobra um, Charter Arms. The original Charter Arms Company did one that pretty much mirrored the size of the J-Frame. The action was different. Um, uh, Charter Arms still makes uh, guns today, but it's a different company than the original. Um, but that shows how popular it is. Of course, we have Taurus and other companies that are building, uh, building. I don't want to say replicas, but spin-offs from the idea and the design. Um, but we also uh, have seen the the J frame evolve into other guns. Here are a couple of 32 mags that are pretty interesting. Uh, they're pretty desirable these days, but they're six shot guns. And by doing so, they put that locking bolt right over the chamber. It's been real popular for hand loaders to take the 32 HR Magnum and load it up heavier than what it was originally loaded to. Um, it was originally loaded at 21,000 cup, as I remember correctly, but the h &R Revolvers, who is the company that uh, that initiated it with Federal Cartridge, um, they their guns wouldn't really take more pressure net. In a strong gun like the single sixes and others, uh, the Ruger single sixes, they will take the 32 mag can be loaded in a plus P fashion. But these guns, the J frames, they're not really the 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 how the the uh, platform to do that on. So just something to keep in mind. Another another spinoff from the from the 38s was uh, of course little. Uh, they did the Airlight uh, series, eight shot, 22 long rifle. Um, these are, my scales tip them a little bit over at over 10 ounces, but they're super, super light. And uh, um, those are those are pretty handy little guns. The other J frames that uh, we commonly know is the kit gun. They were available in the model 34, adjustable sight, four inch barrel. Very handy little gun. It's stainless steel, it became the model 63. Um, these little guns are shooting rascals, but of course I got the name Kit Gun because of uh, the guy that was an outdoorsman or um, backpacker or whatever. It part, became part of his kit for survival. He could use it for small game hunting, survival, and even defense. And I know the 22 is not thought of as a defense gun, but um, I don't know about you. I would not uh, want to uh, attack somebody that's armed with even a 22 because still very good odds he's going to kill you so uh so anyway this is this is one that's kind of an interesting variant uh, it's a model 43 i got this from an old friend of mine up in alaska a sourdough up there by the name of ed stevenson a master guide um incredible friend of incredible uh history with that him he passed away a few years ago but one uh one winter, him and his son had had left the bush and gone to town to get supplies, whatever. On the way back, it hit 50 below. Their snow machines, they crossed the river. They went under, and the snow machines stayed the winter there. And uh, this gun stayed the winter in a river, literally. Uh, it's got a little bit of a pitted bore. It doesn't shoot as good as it should. Um, 
I've got a new barrel for it. I, I need to rebarrel it. So that's actually a high priority. It's sitting on my bench as we speak to do that. But that's an interesting variant. Alloy cylinder, alloy frame as well. And uh, But you'll find that uh, outdoorsmen, there's always a use for a valuable, reliable 22 revolver, such as the J-frame in that caliber. So, um, yeah, the Smith J-frame, they really hit a home run when they came out with that gun. Yeah, it's very, very popular. Smith & Wesson sells them by the train load, if you will, especially in the in the vari variations of the concealed 38 special, self-defense, home defense, whatever. Um, very popular gun for good reason. So um, regarding carrying it, you know, there's a, there's a ton of different ways to carry them. There's inside the waist holsters uh, where they clip on. You know, we talked a minute ago about the clip that goes on the gun with no holster. That's always a good way. Um, um, there's, there's, of course, variations of the pancake design, um, which outside the pants, very, very snug and secure against the body. Good way to carry them. Um, so yeah, there's, there's you find find what fits. You know, I I was gonna start this video and tuck a few of these away on my purse and start pulling them out because to show just how easy they are to conceal. Some people will just empty their pocket and carry them in their pocket, and they actually work. That that's that method actually works really well too. Um, they um, they can potentially be very accurate. Uh, we always think of them as a snub nose gun, short barrel, short range, and that is typically the way it is. But years ago. With this actual gun right here, like more years ago than I can remember, I was doing a lot of experimenting and testing with Model 36s, and I bought six of them. I bought a very early one. It was a pre-Model 36. It was just the Chief Special five-screw frame, and uh, along with several others. And I did a bunch of accuracy testing and work, and uh and i found most of them shot very very well this one shot the best out of all of them and so all the other ones just kind of went away i didn't need six of them i just i just wanted to get the very best shooting one i could and this is the one that won so it's been with me literally 40 something years and one day i was coming back to the ranch and i almost always had a had a a um a rifle uh, a big bore six gun with good adjustable sights with me but on this day it was a kind of a wintry cold day i just run into town real quick and i'd slip this in my pocket and um and on the way back this is all i had but we'd had a big feral dog that weighed 130 pounds uh had been coming in and killing cattle and calves and so forth and he was smart incredibly smart hadn't been able to get him with a rifle hadn't even been able to get a shot at him and um he was completely wild not a, not somebody's domestic dog that was getting um you know getting out at night or something like that this was a wild just like a wolf and it's coming back into the ranch going down the dirt road I look over down by the creek and there he is something around 130 yards and uh, i'll let's just say 130 long paces and i thought oh crap well this little gun i'd been shooting it quite a bit and i'd had a taken a 16 inch still uh higher rim to a three-quarter ton pickup welded a steel plate put it at 100 yards and i got where i could just ring this thing ring that plate with this little gun just day in and day out so i thought well we're gonna try and see what happens i got on the got on him stopped and he looked at me like just like almost no fear or something i got on him and hit him and that was that ended his career and uh and of course the hand load and uh, with my cast bullets and so these little guns are amazing what they can do um uh, you know they have the potential to do it doing it with them is very very difficult but they do have the potential to do it so um anyway great great guns uh everybody should probably has a need for one at some point in their life one thing i didn't mention fail to mention is they do offer longer barrel versions a three inch barrel um and they there's other special runs with adjustable sights and other other options that i'm not even covering here not enough time in the video but um but that's uh that's a that's a true classic gun don't know how many smith and weston sold but it's a big number i can tell you that so anyway thanks for joining us this day and uh, we will see you next time on the pierce brothers